Welcome back to another video. My name is Matt and I help people overcome retroactive jealousy. In this video, I wanna to talk to you about five ways to react to a retroactive jealousy thought. Now, out of these five ways, not all of them are the way you should react. Some of them are not the way you should and some of them are the way you should, but we're gonna go through five of the most common ways that people will react to retroactive jealousy thoughts, to OCD thoughts, so you can kind of get a handle on maybe where you are at uh, as far as how your reactions are and maybe some changes you need to make in order to really start putting in the work uh, to overcome these OCD thoughts of your partner's past. Because again, the more practice we put in, the more work we put in every single day, even when we don't feel like it, even when it sucks, even when it hurts, we gain so much power and we really start to loosen RJ's grip on us and we start feeling better and better and better and eventually we overcome it all together. So we'll get into the five ways uh, people react to retroactive jealousy thoughts in today's video. And of course, if you always uh, need more help in overcoming retroactive jealousy, check out the links in the description below. Before you go today, sign up for any of my retroactive jealousy courses and you'll automatically get my email address absolutely free. You'll get coaching, that's right, free retroactive jealousy one-on-one -on -one coaching with me with any course you sign up for. I'd love for you to be a part of it, so check out those links before you go today. Okay, we ready? Five ways. Five ways that people react to a retroactive jealousy thought, okay? The first one is when the thought comes up, doesn't feel good, explore the thought thought exploration. Again, this is a no-no, okay? This is what we don't want to do. Um, because again, the more we do this, the more focus and attention we put on these thoughts, the more they grow. Remember, what we focus on expands. And so if we're continually to focus on these thoughts by continually to explore them, to analyze them as they come up, to try to solve them, rationalize them, all this stuff, the more we're gonna get caught in it more and more and more. Thought exploration, exploring the thought is 100% a compulsive behavior. And for those of you obviously that watch this channel, you know that compulsive behaviors are, are not good. The more we do those, the more we're gonna get stuck. And that's just, it's not, it's not a good thing, right? So it's very easy to want to analyze it, I get it. It's very easy to wanna to explore it, to get to the bottom of it, to rationalize it. That's how we, you know, solve most problems in our life is by thinking it over and okay, trying to make sense of it all. But when we are in OCD, when we are stuck in this thought loop, this does not work. We have to throw all that, those ideas out the window and really just st stick to the formula and understand thought exploration, exploring the thought, analyzing the thought, trying to rationalize it, it's not going to work. And the more we do that, the more we are telling our brain that this thought is dangerous. I have to think this over. I have to continually try to get to the bottom of it. And when we do that, we're sending signals to the brain and we're basically continuing to hammer down to our brain that you need to react with more adrenaline when these thoughts come up. You need to give me more adrenaline. You need to give me more anxiety. And thus, we're not gonna heal. We're not gonna get any better. So that's one of the most common ways right there people react. Of course, that was me. That was my biggest compulsive behavior, uh, exploring the thought. So make sure if you are doing that, we gotta put a stop to it. Very, very important. All right, so the next way that most of us react to these thoughts when they come up is ask questions. Okay, the thought comes up, the curiosity comes up, we wonder, you know, again, you have all you have your own thoughts that come up, I don't have to explain, but you know, you start being curious, did this actually happen? How did it happen? How far did you guys go? What did the person look like? Where was it at? Did you go to the rest a restaurant afterwards? Um, you know, did you see that person the next day? Did that continue to happen? How did it feel? Why would you do this? All these things are questions. Questions that we will never, ever, ever find answers to that will satisfy us. One question that we ask leads to another question, leads to another question, leads to another question. Questions are 100% a compulsive behavior and we have to cut out the questions. That's difficult, right? That's difficult because again, we're used to, oh, this makes me curious, let me ask, let me get the answer. You know, with everything in life, that's what happens, but not with OCD, not with retroactive jealousy. The questions never end. And again, the more questions we ask, the more we are telling our brain that this thought is dangerous. This thought is going to kill me. I need reassurance. I gotta ask questions. I have to physically do something. Go do this compulsive behavior 
in order to feel better. So that means, brain, every time I get these thoughts, please send more adrenaline, more adrenaline, more adrenaline, right? We're not deliberately wanting that to happen, but that's what's happening every time we're asking questions. And again, another problem with asking questions is now we are really bringing it to life. Now we are, instead of just exploring the thought on our own, we are asking questions. We're bringing our partner into the mix. And that could be very dangerous because this starts turning into pushing and prying and try to find answers, making your partner very upset, making them cry. Um, you know, I, I had some hard, hard times and conversations and struggles, uh, especially making my partner upset by doing that, by asking questions, by trying to get to the bottom of it. Nothing will allow you to get to the bottom of it. Nothing. So asking questions, yes, that's one way a lot of people react to it, just like thought exploration, but it's a no-no. No more questions. That will be the greatest thing that you ever do is no longer ask questions. In a future date, when you've broken out of OCD, if you really want to ask a question just for the heck of it, I highly doubt you'll ever want to. Like You'll have no desire to, as weird as that sounds. You'll have no desire to. But if you want to, then sure, go ahead. Um, but not right now. Uh, we have to break out of this OCD loop first and then um, you can start asking the questions if you want to but I really think that by the time that happens you're out of OCD you'll think with your rational brain and you'll realize that this stuff really doesn't matter uh, you'll see that so much more clear um, when you've broken free and broken out all right number three that says block by the way block it out Okay. That's another way people react to the thoughts. They try to block it out, meaning they go, no, 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 I don't want to hear you. No, 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 I'm not going to listen to you. No, no, no. Or I, you know, I've seen people put headphones on and blast the music to just, no, 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 I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Again, the problem with this is this causes a ton extra anxiety because is it really possible to block out a thought? No. The more we try to block something out, the more aggressive it is, the more it comes on more and more and more. It's like the old saying, you know, don't, don't think about the pink elephant or whatever it is. You know, it makes you think of a pink elephant, right? So blocking it out, it, it just doesn't work, right? Not necessarily a, a compulsive behavior, so to speak, but uh, in a way it is, but it, it just doesn't work. But blocking it out or, or trying to say no, 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 or all the all these things. Um, that, that That's tough on a lot of people because especially when they first see a lot of these videos and a lot of the, these teachings, and I completely understand that's where the first thing is. Oh, okay, I can't explore the thought. I can't ask the question. So let me just block everything that comes my way and blah, 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 blah. No, the idea is more to be an allower to these thoughts, understanding that these thoughts cannot harm you, they cannot kill you, they can't do anything but just make you feel a negative emotion right now. But that negative emotion will pass, and in the long run when we don't react to the negative emotion, we just kind of feel it, let it be there, let it sit there without asking questions, without exploring the thoughts, without doing this, that shows our brain, oh, there's no danger in these thoughts. Matt is not reacting to these thoughts. Matt is not trying to block out these thoughts. Matt's not doing anything. He's, he's, he's just sitting there, the thoughts are coming, the anxiety's there, but he's fine, he's safe. The brain unlocks from that point, okay? And, and that's when the rational brain kicks in. Things get much, much, much easier to understand. The anxiety calms down, and again, you just see things in so much more rational terms, uh, not, not locked up in this you know, skewed sense of reality that retroactive jealousy um, makes it seem like that you're in. So uh, block it out, but don't do it, okay? That's a, that's a big one right there. Don't do it. Number four. Now now we're going to start getting into ones that are um, ones that we want to do, okay? Ones that we want to do. These were the no-nos, okay? Let's draw a little line. No-no, okay? <laughs> but now we're going to get into the ones that we kind of want to start really doing and, and start practicing. I just realized I don't think that's supposed to be there. And this is actually one word, but... I kind of split it in two so you didn't spoil it. Relabel, okay? That's the next one, relabel. That's very important. Relabeling could be the same as like disregarding. Um, you know, that's, that's the natural approach. That's the approach that is going to help us to get over this the quickest is relabeling. Understanding that these thoughts that are coming up are not us. They are OCD. They are retroactive jealousy. It is the condition that is alive inside of us, different from actually who we are, okay? So that's very, very important. When you get these thoughts of your partner's past and it's coming on hot, it's coming on hard, super anxiety, um, the emotional response is ginormous, you know, this is not me. This is not me. 
It's retroactive jealousy. It's OCD. I'm going to disregard it. Okay. Again, it's not blocking it out. The thought comes in because we have to notice, okay, here's the thought. I feel it. I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole though. It's not worth it. No, no questions. It's not worth it, but it's here. I know it's RJ. I know it's retroactive jealousy. I know it's not me and it's the continuation of it. It's not me. So I'm going to disregard. Okay. And that's very, very important. Relabeling is essentially, again, telling your brain manually what's going on, telling your brain manually, this is not me. Thinking this thought is not going to serve me in the least bit. Thinking this thought has nothing to do with what's happening right now in real life. I want to focus on real life. And that's very, very key. Very, very huge. We go in a lot in our courses and everything like that. And if you have coaching with me, we talk a lot about relabeling um, and understanding how powerful that is. Um, you know, and, and literally it is, it's manually telling our brain what is us and what is not us, what thoughts belong to OCD and what thoughts are actually us. That's real life. That's happening right now. So relabeling is something that you really, really got to learn to do, um, and do it every single time. Relabel it, disregard it. I hear you, but I'm not taking you seriously. I hear you, but not now I hear you but this is not real life. What's happening in real life is I'm recording this video. I got to focus on you. What's happening in your real life is you're watching this video. So you're focusing on this. That's real life. Anything else at this point that's coming up, that's giving you high anxiety, but it's not happening right now in the moment. Relabel it. It's not me. It's OCD. It's not me. It's RJ. Okay. We can go to our final one. Okay. And this, this kind of goes hand in hand with relabeling away, disregarding in a way. This is something that um, I'm slowly introducing into my teachings more and more and more as it's helped a lot of people, which um, for me personally, I don't know if it would have helped me or not. Um, I never tried it, but for some it is. So the last one is not taking it seriously. Okay. And am I still on the screen? Okay. Sarcasm. Okay, so not taking it seriously, meaning when these thoughts come up about your partner past, very OCD, the thought comes up about your partner, you know, a mental movie of her having a one night stand with this person and all this flood of adrenaline and everything like that. You can just say something, be sarcastic to it, be like, yep, great, it happened. Okay, thanks, whatever. You don't need to let me know. Bye. Like almost like you don't really care, being very, very, very sarcastic. A lot of people have a relationship OCD saying, oh, your partner's going to cheat on you, your partner, or this person's more attractive than you, their ex is more attractive. Yep, they are. Yep. Yep. You're absolutely right. They are. Doing that's very, very important because again, you're almost slapping RJ in the face. You're slapping the OCD in the face. You're being sarcastic with it. It's trying to be so serious to you, but you're not responding being serious back because you know it's not serious. You know it's not real. You know it's not real life. It's, again, thoughts that are going on in your head. Um, so being sarcastic with it, not taking it seriously, joking kind of back with it. That's kind of the idea being very sarcastic. Yeah, sure. Great. Yep. Uh -huh, that happened. Yep. Sure. Great. Oh, yep. This is going to happen. But just not again, giving the anxiety attention, not really getting bogged down in it to where you think it is serious. It's taking a step back from it. Just kind of laughing at it, laughing at it. Some people go as far as to pretend that their retroactive jealousy, that voice in their head is like Donald Duck or goofy or some silly character from a movie or something like that. And it's just, they don't take it seriously. They just think it's hilarious. It's funny. Um, so again, that's kind of a new one that I've been introducing more and more into my stuff because I, uh, especially my coaching and stuff, because I feel like it's been working. Be sarcastic to the OCD, to the RJ. When these mental movies come up, don't take them seriously. Say, oh yeah, I bet they really enjoyed that. Oh yeah, I bet that was really, really fantastic. Oh, but again, it's almost reverse psychology on the whole thing. But it's very powerful and you're still feel some anxious responses and stuff like that but it's just going to be a much more lighter tone to your reactions and responses to the thoughts so between these two relabeling and being sarcastic not taking things seriously very very powerful these are the things that you're going to want to do we'll star these these are the things that you're going to want to do to really overcome uh, the OCD aspects of RJ. And again, once you overcome the OCD aspects of RJ, everything else is so much easier. When these thoughts are not piling on and on and on every two seconds, five seconds, whatever it is, like it was for me, it's so much easier to do everything else. So, um, you know, if you have self-esteem issues or value issues or whatever, it's so much easier to tackle those once the OCD is gone. And this is how 
Um, we get it. This is how we break free. This, no, no, okay? This, yes, let's do it. Relabel, don't take this seriously. Disregard, it's not you, it's retroactive jealousy. Over and over and over again with enough repetition, we break free and we get out of retroactive jealousy. Of course, if you want some more help in overcoming RJ, check out those links before you go today. Again, sign up for any of my courses. I'll give you my personal email address absolutely free. Not only will you get the self-study courses, but you'll have me there to help you out along the way with anything that you need. So enrollment's happening right now. You can buy each course separately. There's three courses. Or enroll in, in I should say, enroll in whichever course you want, or you can bundle all three courses together. Get 90 days of email coaching and get all my courses, everything I have to offer. So I'd love to see you in the course. I'd love to see you there. If you want at least a freebie to take home, I got a meditation and I got an ebook down there as well and the link's in the description below. So be sure to check that out before you go today. Thank you for joining me, everybody, and I'll see you in the next video.